All right, this is our next episode of True Wrestling Fan Discussions, continuing our WCW slash NWA Clash of the Champions review. This is me, Clash of the Champions 3, the fall brawl. I'm your host, Mike. I'm Frank. Um, let's get into it uh, without walking off this thing, because th- this, it had an, it, you you look at it, there was, you know, on paper, card looks pretty good. Execution of the matches, not so much. So September 7th, 1988 from Albany, Georgia, uh, 3,700 on hand for this. On TBS, I was really shocked. It drew a 5.4 rating um, Pretty good. on this. It was, it was, yeah. This is the first, the first uh, fall brawl. Yeah. You know, they, I think they have three of these Clash of Champions uh, fall, fall brawls. And then like, they, I think they skipped 92 and then 93, it becomes a pay-per-view, I think, mm-hmm. off the top of my head. Yeah, I remember, you know, some of the clashes, they do that. Mm-hmm. Um, and then, of course, you know, they have, you know, like last one was Miami Mayhem. They they started naming them. Your co-host for the night was Tony Schiavone and the NWA world champion Ric Flair. JR and Bob Cottle were doing the commentary. So the opening match of the night was for the NWA television title. It was Mike Rotunda defending the title against Barra Brad Armstrong. I don't know. The match itself was okay. It was all right. It, it ended terrible. in a time limit draw, which is typical for a television title match. But JR at the end of the match made it sound like Brad Armstrong just beat Ric Flair. Like, oh my God, he did it. He did it. He did. It. What did he, he Lex, do? It's like Lex Luger. It's like Lex yeah, Luger. He, he, he survived 93. 20 minutes. And didn't get a pinfall and did not he, walk away the champion. I guess he was trying to put him over, I guess. But he was he was acting like he had accomplished some great feat. Like, oh my god. Exactly. It was a draw. If it didn't if it didn't work putting him over in the last clash against Barry Windham, it wasn't gonna work now. Right. They're still but they're still going forward. I mean, in the final minute, Rotunda did try multiple times to get the, the pinfall and, and, and he didn't couldn't do it. Not to mention Kevin Sullivan repeatedly getting involved in the match. But in, in typical TV uh, title fashion in a 20 minute time limit, this did go to a draw. So Mike Rotunda keeps the uh, the television championship. Um, following that match, uh, Tony and uh, Shivani and Ric Flair were talking about the Flair Luger match back mm-hmm. in July. Amongst other things, they have another rematch coming up. The one in July was uh, it was ended due to excessive blood loss. Yeah. Well, um, the Luger. For those yeah, that don't know, Luger. Luger had the excessive blood loss. Yeah, so they they do have a match coming up. Uh, plus, after that, uh, Jim Ross was announcing about Jimmy Garvin had a broken leg. They showed the footage from September third. Sullivan uh, and uh, Rotunda. Um, Sullivan throwing uh, cinder blocks on his leg. Jeez, and so Jimmy Jam Garvin is going to be out for a little bit. So our next match on the card was. <laughs> Nikita Koloff and Dr. Death Steve Williams against the Sheep Herders. Why? I don't know. They weren't there that long. For those that don't know, that don't know, the Sheep Herders eventually become the Bushwhackers. And yeah. Was, yeah. And it was still weird seeing them as heels. It is. No, it's strange. And, uh, but they did a good job. They did. It. No, no, they actually did a good job. Yeah. Um, I think this is pretty much just about over for them because I think shortly after this, they do go to WWF. Uh, of course, they got Rip Morgan at ringside, the flag bearer. You know, he was the during the match. He distracted Williams uh, to where Koloff couldn't make the tag. The Sheep Herders had him in that corner, was beating him down for a good good period of time. Out of nowhere, Koloff hits the Russian sickle mm-hmm. on uh, Butch and actually gets the pin here. So the Sheep Herders are 0 for 2 on Clash of Champions here. But a good win and a good pickup for Nikita and Dr. Destiny Williams. I just didn't understand this match considering they have feuds elsewhere. And yet they're focusing their attention on the Sheep Herders. But it wasn't a bad match. It, the first two matches, though, the, the, the time limit was excessive. Yeah. 20 minutes on the first one, 17 on this one. Just trying to kill time and trying to get this thing over with. <laughs> so. Yeah, because the, the next match on the card was the shortest of the night. And I can see why. It was Dusty Rhodes versus Kevin Sullivan. And again, and Gary Hart's at ringside uh, for this match. Mm-hmm. Uh, Sull- Dusty, you know, threw Sullivan's you know, head into the announce table four or five times. You know, of course, the table, once again, you know, breaks a little bit. But nothing too bad. 
Uh, then, of course, he strikes Gary Hart at ringside. Um, it wasn't bad. It was really funny when Gary Hart hits Dusty Rhodes with a shoe. Like, okay. The match itself between the two, when they actually were in the ring, wasn't bad. However, Al Perez coming out with a dog collar uh, chain and attacking Rhodes, and there's no disqualification set on this. And Rhodes rose up Gary Hart for the pin. What the hell are we doing here? When was Gary Hart part of the match? That you roll him up and the referee counts a three. I, exactly. I, I, I don't have words. I don't know. And it was no, you see, now me, you see why it, you see why the NWA was going out of business right here at this point. Yeah. Yes, they're about to sell it to Crockett. Yeah, not, I mean, I'm sorry, Crockett is about to sell it to Turner. Yeah, it's, it's, it's over. And to me, this match ended at a disqualification. Dusty Rhodes wins by that, but no, he won by pinfall, pinning Gary Hart, which do, does not look like Kevin Sullivan. But whatever, you know, Dusty Rhodes gets the victory. So. Following to following that match, uh, Tony had announced that John Ayers, oh, Jesus Christ. San Francisco 49er, two-time Super Bowl winner, will be the referee in the next Flair Luger match. And when Flair asked him, "What what makes you, you know, think you're relevant? That what makes you think you're you, you can do this?" And, he, and he's like, "Oh, I'm impartial." And I guess well, the man's not used to being. No, on the he's not used to being Sound on the mic. A little bit nervous. I'll yeah, yeah. That. Flair jumped in to save him too. Like he's yeah. like, I don't mean to cut you off, but he Flair, Flair called the audible and uh, Thank tried to save him. I mean, the, you know, the story behind this is that he's good friends with Dusty Rose. That that you know, he was a he went he was a West Texas guy, or whatever. Dusty Rose was friends with this guy, Forty Nine er. You know, he was an established uh, you know NFL player, and he yeah. just thought it would be a good idea to bring him in, and and, and it was terrible. It was terrible. I don't care how big the guy is; like he couldn't talk on the mic. No, so, and this won't be the first time we see. No, unfortunately, it's not. The, it's not the, the last. Tonight. I'll get to that in the main event. Our next match on the card was a Russian chain match. Yeah, uh, Ricky Morton versus Ivan Kolov with uh, Paul Jones yeah. and the Russian assassin. Yeah, assassin one, Ooh. assassin two, or whatever the hell's going on over there at the time. I, I, I'm sorry, but the best part of the match for me was the ending of what happened. Oh to yeah, Kolov. yeah, 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 yeah. But. To, to be fair, uh, Ricky Morton did beat Koloff after touching all four corners uh, of the ring, uh, being you know hooked to the chain to Koloff. Now, after the match is where it got interesting because Paul Jones was irate up uh, to Ivan Koloff mm -hmm. to where Koloff pretty much punched out Paul Jones. He's done with him. Looks like he's babyface now. The Russian assassin came back and attacked Kolo. Yep. And then here comes the next Russian assassin. Yep. Assassin number two. Came down and they all attacked Kolo. So that's going to set up Clash of, uh, at Clash of Champions 4. Paul Jones will be facing Ivan Kolo. Oh. But that to me was more interesting than the match with Ricky Morton. Yeah, the, be the best part of the match was, was the ending. Mm -hmm. So Kolo, you know, now apparently babyface. He'll get his revenge on them. Ricky Morton gets the singles victory over... Ivan Koloff. Now, following this match, Jim Ross now interviews John Ayers. I told you it wasn't going to be the last time you saw him. It was bad. It, it might have been the worst. It might have even been worse the second time around. Yeah. Well, his appearance the final time made no sense. But we're going to get into that. Though. Yeah, he was the enforcer. Go ahead. I didn't even see him at ringside. I thought, okay, briefly I saw him sitting he there. there. He was there. But then I, I, I'm I, looking because then J.J. Dillon grabs a chair. He's going to yeah. sit down. And I think I'm going to be impartial. To... All right. I think we could have found anybody else but you. That was, but, rough. Okay, it was, rough. It was rough. It was rough. Dusty's the booker. Gave his friend a shot. The main event of the clash for the NWA United States Championship, Barry Windham defending the title against Sting. And of course, this is going to end in NWA fashion. Think with Sting on his thing on his, uh, his quest. His quest. He, he is adamant for getting yeah. a singles title because mm -hmm. they were talking about how in November on Thanksgiving it would be two years for Sting. And I love when they mentioned they say who has done more in the first two years of their uh, pro, pro wrestling career than Sting. And I just looked up and I just shouted out, oh, "Ultimate Warrior did," because uh, he's champion right now. But they can't mention that because it's a different organization. They're a former tag team with the two of them before they got recognized by each other's organization. But 
Obviously, they can't say that because no, they're re- they're referring to NWA. They're not referring to but it, but I mean Sting. Realistically, <laughs> yes, he had the fastest rise in two years, and he is hungry for a mm-hmm. title that he cannot get. Um, now during the match, Wyndham was busted open. Um, he was. I love how he was working on his knee because uh, Sting's knee because he eventually applies the figure four leg lock, which was rare of Wyndham to do. Mm-hmm. But eventually, you know, and of course, J.J. Dillon helping him uh, along with the, putting the pressure on Sting. But, the, you know, the hold was broken. Wyndham ex- accidentally knocks the ref out during this match. Now, this is where it's going to get interesting. Yeah. Sting applies the Scorpion, Scorpion death lock, but, you know, he, and he, he sees Dillon coming into the ring with a chair, breaks the hold, and, and, the t- and hits Dillon. Wyndham uses the chair on Sting. Now... <laughs> As the ref is counting the three, John Ayers stops the referee, pulls Wyndham off of Sting, tells the referee what he did. Now, the referee never saw this, but because Ayers tells him what happened, the referee disqualifies Wyndham and Sting gets the victory. I'm sorry. I thought the referee had to see the the disqualification. But yet again, this this is the night where we're pinning managers instead of superstars. So why not end the night like this in chaos? And of course, you know, Ayers gets up in, in uh, Dylan's face. He's not a guy to be messed with. He's trying to establish. Yeah, he's trying to establish that you guys cannot intimidate me. That was actually fine. That was well done. That part, yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But the whole part where oh, he hit him with the chair. Oh, he did. Oh, ring the bell. We're just going off speculation now. Even well, though it did say. happen, here's but here's again, it. yeah. <laughs> Even though it happened. The referee never saw it. Yeah, so Sting wins Flair. by disqualification. Right. No title. Flair's irate. Oh, my God. So this is the second of three clashes that Sting cannot get an actual clean victory or any victory. You know, can't get a belt. The, the first a belt. one was a draw. He's trying, yeah, he's he trying man. He's trying. Uh, unfortunately, Sting will not be on the next clash. So, I mean, it, the night, it, it ended in chaos, but the fans were were were, were loving it. And to me, I just think it was a little cheesy, but it's yeah, they can't all way. they can't all be great. It's fine. It's okay. You're gonna have no. some like it's fine. setbacks. Yeah, unfortunately, and this was and then, this was one of them. But and it's coming, you know, and, and the merger is coming. Well, not the merger, the buyout, the uh, g- you know, the acquisition, Ted Turner's acquisition, it becoming WCW's. Yeah, right around the corner. Now, the, the, you know, as far as you know, clashes go, the next one won't be you know too bad. You know, at least the main event will end in a decision. Right. But, you know, again, tonight, this one was a little chaotic, but Sting gets the victory. Still hungry for that title. He's going to get it. He's going to get it eventually. He's gonna, quite a few he's going to get. And then he's going to so. join the Horsemen, which didn't make any sense. But that's a story for another night. <laughs> and we'll, we'll... And, and when Luger joins them, too, right, and, yeah. this whole thing with Flay, it's whatever, man. I, we can't. Don't don't get me yeah. started. All right. Well, that's our uh, that's our review. Please like, comment, share, subscribe. We'll see you guys soon. Take care.